Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer, creating something of a craft illustration project that is all about outlines, mirroring, creating shapes from those outlines. I will be creating this wolf image as a sample for a craft cutout project where the different colors are on different layers stacked on top of each other to create the final image. Normally you would start with a rough sketch of what you want to draw. I wanted to try it and jump straight in so I did not make a sketch, making it a lot harder for myself in the process. Here is the video I thought about the sketch halfway through recording and that's a little late. So I'm starting with a rectangle that I turned into a symbol that gets mirrored so I can work with two sides that are instantly updated. So we have a symmetrical animal head to start with. I like to start with the eyes as they are the most important part in any face or animal head for that matter. I create a circle, duplicate it, smaller circle inside and then start duplicating that to create the shape of the eye. Use it as a clip mask to contain the circle inside the larger shape of the eyes. I use the pen tool and draw straight lines first and then go in with the note tool to give it the curve and edit detail that I want. Just feels faster that way than handling the busier curves right away. As you can see, as soon as I draw something on the left side, it's mirrored on the right side. So that's the way you do symmetry in Affinity Designer. All you need to do is make sure you're working inside the symbol. I'm duplicating shapes and adding more lines, trying to find a nice shape for this head. The big advantage is I'm working in vectors, so everything can be scaled, moved, altered. With these, there is no erasing or having to rework large areas. I just move the objects that I don't like and place something else there or adjust the notes on the object that I don't like. I'm trying to avoid large open areas, rather creating small shapes that are enclosed by the outline. When creating extra detail, it can be helpful to revert the curve to a straight line, add the extra nodes and then curve in order to create the added detail. The design feels a little too wide so I'm scaling it down and you can see the elements that are on the edge of the mirror rectangles need to be adjusted in order to match up again. I'm checking to make sure there is no gap between the lines and no severe overlap. The initial idea of creating a clip mask for the eye was good, but not helpful when I tried to convert everything to curves and combine those curves into one single curve in the end. So I'm taking it out of the clipping mask and cut the bits that are overlapping 
do the same thing with the circle converted to a curve and take off the top bit so it is within the shape of the eye. Make sure to save the file and create a new version before you expand the strokes because this is irreversible. You lose the line art that is easily editable and end up with a lot more nodes that are a lot harder to manipulate. Once all the nodes are expanded to curves, I combine them to create one single object and combine that with the iris and the nose. I take that one shape out of the symbol, mirror it and combine those two sides to create one shape that is my face. Now I can check for additional nodes that look odd, delete them to clean it up and I have the base design. I duplicate that one, place one of the copies in a separate layer. In this case I name them, the top one will be my outline, I lock that one and in the layer I have the colors. I take that shape and use the boolean divide to separate all the vector shapes. This creates the individual shapes to color. I select shapes on either side, left and right and start coloring them. Limiting the number of colors to seven or eight because this will be a cut out design in the end. Too many different shades will lead to too many different layers to be cut out afterwards. So going through all the shapes and giving them a color using the color picker once I set my initial seven or eight colors. Once I'm happy with the colors, I select shapes with identical colors and combine them using the boolean ed. I delete the two shapes that I colored black from the black outline at the very top of my layer stack. Now that I have seven different color layer shapes from the orange to the dark to the lightest pink and the black on the very top, I can combine those to gradually increase the cutout. The orange shape at the bottom will have the least amount of cutout while the black outline on top will have every other color cut out of it. For the orange, I just cut the white parts out of the complete silhouette that sits at the very bottom. And I can delete the orange part because that color is now covered by the whole silhouette. Then I take the next color, which is the darkest one, and add a duplicate of all the other colors to it. I end up with the silhouette and the two parts cut out, the iris and the eye. And then I'll repeat the same thing with all the other shapes. I'm adding a duplicate of the shapes above to that one and repeat that until I reach the last lightest pink. Now I have seven layers in different colors that are slowly increasing in fill. The black outline, then the lightest pink, which has the fill in for the nose and the ears. And then the next color fills in a little more. And so does the color after that. And when stacked on top of each other, we get our final result with seven different colors. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new today, hit the like button to celebrate your new bit of knowledge. To help you remember everything you've learned even better, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you like to see on this channel or on my website. And I'll see you again soon.